Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about the basic introduction to bioassay. Bioassay, as the name indicates, bio indicates living conditions. So the assay procedure which is carried out in the living animals or the living tissues is called as bioassay. So this bioassay is introduced by Paul Elrich, has been given the biostandardization of diphtheria antitoxin. Coming to the definition of the bioassay, it is the estimation of the potency of the given active principle in a given unit quantity of preparation by finding their effect or measuring their effect in the living animals or tissues. So in short, we can also say that detection and measurement of the concentration of a substance in a preparation using the biological methods. So bioassay has various synonyms like biological assay, biometrics, biological standardization or biostandardization. Assay is a test to find out the amount or activity of an active principle in the unit quantity of the preparation. So if this assay is done under the living conditions or in the living organisms or tissues, we term it as bio assay or else there are some other assays which may include the physiochemical assays, immunological assays like radio immuno assay or enzyme linked immunosorbate assay etc. Bio standardization. So bio indicates living condition. Standardization here it indicates that we are going to adjust and compare the dose of our test sample with that of the standard under rigidly controlled conditions. So why we need to adjust the doses? For example, in some crude drugs, there are more number of active principles. Here only one active ingredient is helping us to show certain activity. If you are not adjusting the dose, the other active principles may show some other action. So it is necessary to adjust the dose and compare its response with that of the standard. This process is nothing but bio-standardization. What are the indications of bioassay? If there is no chemical method to do the assay or if the chemical method is available but it is too complex to do, then we will prefer the bioassay. Apart from that, we are going to use this bioassay to measure the pharmacological activity of a new or chemically undefined substances or if you are collecting it from various sources with different composition, we are we don't know the chemical structure of that particular compound. If we know also if the, we are having the similar structure but it is having different pharmacological activity, then we are going to indicate the bioassay for its study. What are the principles of bioassay? All the bioassays must be compared with a standard drug or a preparation. So why we are comparing with the standard is to overcome the biological variation we are comparing it with the standard. And the standard and the test drug should be identical to each other. Preferably they should be checked for their therapeutic activity. If it is an analgesic drug we should check there for the analgesic activity. If you are assuming the test drug should be having some analgesic property we are going to compare with the standard analgesic drug and check the analgesic activity. And to overcome the errors due to the biological variations, we should use the same animals, same controlled conditions and we have to use a standard with similar mechanism of action and pharmacological effects. Limitations of BioSC so when compared to the other methods like chemical methods or any other methods, bioassay have certain limitations which includes it is less accurate, it is more laborious to do, it has more troublesome and it is also expensive. So all these are the limitations of the bioassay. What are the precautions we need to take to minimize the biological variation? So whatever experimental conditions we are following, all those conditions should be kept constant. And the biological tissue, whatever we are doing, taking to do the experiment, it should be sensitive to that particular drug. And the number of experiments, whatever we are doing, should be sufficiently large to have a proper response. 
and the animals we are used for the study should be of same species strain similar age weight sex and the diet given for these animals also should be similar and the conditions of housing also should be similar for all the animals in bioassay we are comparing the activity or amount of a test drug with a standard so what is this standard so the standard preparations or the reference standards are internationally accepted samples and they are being maintained and recommended by the biological standardization of who this standard preparation should have the uniform quality they should be stable and free from the moisture and oxygen so to have that particular conditions they are stored under the low temperatures in the absence of light in the absolutely dry condition and in the sealed containers so where this standard preparations are available in india they are maintained and distributed by the central research institute kausali and the central research laboratory of calcutta so the standard and the test are compared in the unit quantity so what is this unit unit is defined as a definite weight of one of these standard preparations which produces the same effect or certain effect in terms of the preparation under the test what are the characteristics of a good assay method the assay method should be sensitive it should be having the specificity repeatability it should show the same result during the repeated experiments also reproducibility precision accuracy and stability nothing but the tissue has to stay bioassay fit so a bioassay can be performed in the in vivo conditions or in the in vitro conditions in vivo conditions are nothing but the intact animals in vitro is nothing but in the isolated tissues in the specific cells or in the specific organisms so apart from the in vivo and in vitro studies the bioassay can also be conducted on the whole animals like on the spinal cat we can do non adrenaline assay guinea pig we can use the cardiac glycoside assay mice and rat can be used for various insulin or estrogen assays etc and even the microorganisms also can be used for the bioassays examples like uh, for vitamin b12 we can use eugelna gracilis for tetracycline bacillus plumulus etc so we can also do the bioassay in the isolated tissues as the well known frog rectus abdominis muscle or the guinea pig ileum rat uterus etc or we can also do the bioassay by the dispersed cells so we have seen up to now what the introduction for the bioassay in the next upcoming video i will post you about the types of bioassay which includes the quantal assay and graded assay which can be done by direct and indirect assay methods